Well, good evening. It's great to be with you all. Welcome to Mikayo Messenger and Sunday Night Live. Woohoo! We are fired up to be together tonight. And man, do we got some fun stuff to share. So the human heart has a mind of its own, scientists find. Why is this important to a Christian? Well, because science is proving that faith really does come from the heart. You really can believe with your heart. And we'll talk more about that. Kind of exciting. And uh, whoa, they are really preparing for this eclipse. Isn't it only supposed to last like four minutes or something? I mean, why all the preparation, man? They're calling in the National Guard for this? Uh, do you think there might be more going on than uh, what we think is going on? We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Then we've got the Aleph and the Tav. We've talked before about this, but, uh, you know, X marks the spot, but, uh, you know, it, Jesus, of course, is famous for saying, I am the Aleph of the Tav. Of course, it's translated as Alpha and Omega because that's Greek, but he would have said it in Aramaic, which would have been Aleph and Tav, the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So uh, could it, is it just coincidence that this is forming an, both an Aleph and a Tav, uh, the beginning and the end? Uh, is this marking the end of America, an end of an age, uh, the beginning of a new age, perhaps? We know that Tav actually represents not only the cross, which Jesus died on, but it's also the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, so it also means the last or the end. So is this representing the end of mankind as we know it and the society as we know it well we'll explore that possibility as well and uh whoa if, if if the if the eclipse wasn't enough of a biblical uh you know a biblical omen we've got cicadas popping up in the billions uh what that's right, cicadas, like locusts, you know, very similar to locusts in the Bible. Cicadas are going to be in the billions in biblical proportions, popping up around the same time. Hmm, could there be any connection here? And might this have something to do with, uh, you know, the prophecy in in Revelation 9, talking about the locust-like creatures that are stinging everybody for five months? Just curious if there might be any connection with that. We can explore that a little bit tonight as well. There's also a famous movie uh, called Cicada 3301. Is there any connection there as well about the dark web? Uh, also, you may remember we had a video called The Zombie Apocalypse. I encourage you to watch it. We go over some really interesting information in this video. It's on the channel here, Mikhail Messenger. And uh, in that video, we talk about these towers going out and the possibility of us uh, connecting with them. Well, it, they, they found out that uh, graph of the fiend, of the ox, of the eyed, uh, can be made so thin and so small, it may just be able to go inside of a person without them perhaps knowing that it's inside of them. And they've been doing lots of tests with cell phones and so forth, finding uh, connections with people rather than towers. So we might want to talk a little bit about that. Also, of course, Madonna's up to her regular satanic antics. What else is new these days, right? But this time around, she's uh -huh. quoting the Bible. She's quoting the Bible. So, so not just is she dressing and worshiping Satan, but she's actually bringing the Revelation specifically, the book of Revelation, into Whoa. her concert. So it's becoming a true satanic ritual there. And then uh, is Saturn the true Lord of the Rings? We all know the famous movie Lord of the Rings. And is, is that really based on Saturn, which is, uh, you know, the Lord that the pagans worship? And uh, it's even showing up on credit cards. And does it have a connection to BlackRock? You may, you may be familiar with that famous company name, BlackRock. Well, there's a place that's legend to be told called Rupes Nigra, uh, if I said that right, in... Uh, in the North Pole, a magnetic black mountain. Does this have anything to do also with the Lord of the Rings, the famous Mount Doom that they're magnetically drawn to? Is there a connection there as well? Um, then we've got uh, Argentina's president seems to be calling for rebuilding the third temple. We can take a look at that as well. Soylent Green is Mickey D's. Mm, something to consider. Uh, you are what you eat brings new meaning to the word. They're finding lots of intriguing things inside of food, it seems, that you may have already eaten. Sorry to say. And uh, me too, so sorry to say as well. Um, and also they have uh, uh, a list of factories they seem to try be, be getting rid of that have been making this meat to try to cover their tracks. Something like this. 
Uh, you know, it's not often you bring up a beetle when we're talking about end times, but uh, there's some new evidence that there may be some some truth to this whole Paul fall, uh, and uh, it may be George Harrison that revealed it. What does that have to do with end times? Well, we, we shall see. And then uh, NASA, what does it really stand for? Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Satanism. Is there a connection with Gematria and 666? And then, boy, thank, thanks, Oriana. She's on a, on a roll here with these Latin translations. You know, lots of interesting connections with Latin words that we're going to go over as well. And, uh, and then, may, may, could it be that Enoch was actually foreshadowing the month and year of our departure? All this and more today we'll be exploring. Guys, please hit that subscribe button. We can't do it without you. And they keep removing subscribers. They're just on a roll. Uh, every time we put out a video, they remove subscribers, which obviously that's just not organically normal. Uh, so unless everybody's just like, oh, I just can't stand this video. But, uh, but well, no, it's not, I, I, having done this for years now, I know what the normal organic uh, sort of uh, outspan is, but it seems to be a trigger for them. So please help us out by subscribing, 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 subscribe often, you know, subscribe again, subscribe a few more times uh, because odds are they probably removed you as a subscriber. And uh, also, if you could help this ministry out, we need your support. It allows us to do this. We don't just do this on Sundays. We have things going on every day in our fellowship, which I hope you will come out over to the fellowship. Just go to Mikhail Ministries dot com right there you can also find the links in the description uh but we have events happening literally every day uh here we are an online church ministry kind of radical but we're helping people all over the world come to christ so you know you can't find a church well you just found one so come on over and join us and uh we are helping people come to christ we're helping people walk with christ uh if you haven't been here before when you come in you might be overwhelmed you might be like, oh what is all this it's like hey it's called a fellowship it's great we got so many things so many ways that we can interact with each other that we can't do on youtube or anywhere else so it's definitely worth it it's free so come on over mikhailministries.com but we're right here sunday night live if you go in the upper left you can see our calendar and then you can scroll down you'll see we have bible q a tomorrow night so any questions you have in the Bible, we will be answering tomorrow night. Just come and bring them. And then uh, prayer and communion on Tuesday night. The communion is not a Catholic thing. It's a biblical thing. It's something that Jesus actually invented and told us to do in remembrance of him. So we do that and some prayer. And then more than conquerors, we do on Wednesday night to overcome sin and help people uh, get the victory in the Lord. Open fellowship following that. Then we have discipling, one of my personal favorites, discipling class and training time on Thursday night. So we hope you join us for that so you can live the life of a true disciple. And then game night on Friday night, uh, we come together and we have Bible trivia celebrating uh, the word in some fun ways. And then Bible discussion on Saturday. It's really an open Bible discussion. It's a Bible study, but we, we want more participation, right? So everybody can participate. You can either type or talk, but uh, everyone's welcome to participate. We also have Christian movie night uh, on Saturday night. Looks like we got the book of Esther coming up this Saturday. So that's exciting. And then Sunday, we're back to Sunday service and Sunday Night Live where we are right now. So, all right. I want to welcome everybody who's here in the fellowship. And again, if you want to come over here, you can come over here right now and get in the discussion. We will also try to get to questions and in YouTube. But of course, we give deference and preference to those who are right here with us. So, you know, got another incentive to come on over and join us over here. But we will try to try to help you out there at YouTube as well as much as we can. But there's nothing like the live voice of people asking questions and, and interacting. So we hope you'll come over and join us for that. So I want to welcome everybody tonight. How you guys doing? <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah! Monday uh, Night Live! All right! <laughs> Well, I'm Ed, guys. It's good to be together, and uh, we always have a fun time here at Sunday Night Live. And, uh, whoo, man, a lot of fun things to cover tonight. I want to thank Oriana and Louie and others who contributed to tonight's topics. Uh, great job, guys, as always. I mean, I'm always blown away. I'm always thinking, gee, what are we going to talk about tonight? And then they flood me with like a million things. So it's always a lot of fun. So thank you so much for everybody who contributed. So anything you want to kick off the night with? What's on your mind? What's on your heart? Uh, what do you want to talk about? I'd like to calm down there. The rapture people a little bit, calm, just calm, a little. Calm them down. Because <laughs> the rabbi, I read something last night from the rabbis that got together, and they said that 2067 is the year of the 40th jubilee, and it's the year the Jewish people will accept Jesus as their Messiah. That's what well, I heard. Those rabbis are going to get a rude awakening, man. He's going to come at a time that they do not expect, on a day and an hour when they're not looking for him. And that's going to be the big shocker. It's not going to be when they think it's going to be. It's going to come like a thief in the night. So 
Look out, rabbis, because Jesus isn't coming. <laughs> Amen. Uh, other thoughts? All right. Well, the human heart, guys, um, supposedly has a mind of its own. Uh, scientists are proving this. And uh, it's always been a symbol of love and romance. In reality, however, it's an organ that pumps blood around their bodies. Of course, we know that. But they're finding that it actually has neurons that are in your heart, very similar to the mind. So, because I always thought about this, I'm like, you know, in, in Romans and elsewhere, it says, for it's with your heart that you believe. And you're like, is that figurative? Is that literal? You know, is it really my organ, the organ of my heart that I believe? You know, and a lot of times we feel things in our gut or we feel things in our heart and we're like, is that really where I'm feeling it? Well, maybe it is really where you're feeling it because they've done some scientific studies, science, and they're proving the Bible with science. And that's always a good thing. So, you know, they talk about uh, the brain is not the only organ that produces emotions. This is because the heart actually contains neurons similar to those in the brain. And these fire in conjunction with the brain. The heart and the brain are therefore connected. When your heart receives signals from the brain via the sympathetic nerves, it pumps faster. Ooh. And when it receives signals through the parasympathetic nerves, it slows down. So it's very much like the relationship of Christ with the Father. The, you know, Christ can do nothing other than what the Father tells him to do. And they communicate with each other. But, but, but Christ also prays to the Father, right? So it's kind of like the heart and the brain, as I often use that connection of the brain being like the Father, heart being like Jesus, and the lungs being like the Holy Spirit. We have our own trinity in our body because we're made in God's image. So neurons are associated with thought processes in the brain, but highly specialized ones have been found situated on the right ventricle surface. It begs the question, what are thought process neurons doing in an organ that pushes blood around our body? These heart neurons can think for themselves. Woo. An experiment, a piece of right ventricle from a rabbit uh, where these specialized nerves have been found is placed in a tank with oxygen and nutrients. The piece of heart manages to beat on its own despite being unattached, suspended, and having low blood flowing through it. Whoa. Ooh. When Professor Patterson shocks the heart tissue, it immediately slows down this beating. <laughs> Professor Patterson believes that it is a direct decision made by the neurons as they respond to the impulse. The human heart reacts strongly to negative emotions. Health studies have proved, oh, proven... Hot. That intense anger has an adverse effect on the heart, increasing the risk of heart attack by five times. Intense grief is also extremely unhealthy. You are 20 more, 20 more time, 21 more times more likely to have a heart, heart attack the day immediately after you lost a loved one. Wow. So heart is really tied into our emotions, guys. So, you know, faith is in the heart. Repentance is in the mind. Isn't it amazing that it could literally be that way? It's not just a figurative thing, but that, that we actually have these neurons that are connected to our emotions mm -hmm. and perhaps and you know what? what we believe. Wow. Yeah. Well, what's it, that, it Tandra? Does, it, it does say in Proverbs 23, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, there's a lot of scriptures that relate to that. We were just doing that today. If you haven't didn't see our uh, message today, I hope you go back and watch it. We're, we're doing a three-part series on love. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Next week is love your neighbors yourself. And the third week is love one another as I have loved you. But we taught, we broke down today, love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Actually, it's all your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength in that order. But, uh, uh, you know, and we went into great detail about that, so I hope you'll check that out. But, yeah, great point. What were you going to say, Tondra, too? Was there something? I thought I heard you share a comment. Um, the thing that you just said about you're more likely to pass away. I, what did it say? A day after you lose a loved one? Oh, yeah. Right. 20, 21 more times. The girl that I went to high school with, she actually, I can't remember if it was like a week or a month later, but she did actually pass away after her mom did. Wow. And don't we hear that all the time about elderly? You know, often they lose a spouse and quickly the, the other spouse dies yep. following that. So the heart, yep. the heart could really be the key to that. Very intriguing indeed. Kind of brings new meaning to it's with your heart you believe, you know, and other scriptures like it. It's kind of very, very intriguing there. And uh, there's some other, 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 other articles on this. A heart is an intelligent organ. It knows very well which emotions help you connect better with others has around 40,000 neurons and benefits from positive moods and relaxed states. That's why, you know, when they, people have heart attacks, it's usually because they're stressed and they're anxious and they're worried about things, right? And so, you know, it really is tied in with our emotional state, the three connections of the heart. Um, of all the cells of the heart, 67% are nerve cells. Our hearts are responsible 
for homeostasis. Um, so very, very intriguing stuff here. So we think with our heart, not with our head. All right, cool. Any other thoughts on this one? Okay. I was just thinking I just love how incredible our creator is because of <laughs> the intricacy of our bodies. Like he, he, it's just amazing to me that he it put us is. together that way. It truly yeah. is, you know? Um, and we're always learning new things about it. Just when you think you know something, you don't yet know as you ought I to know. I wonder what the connection yeah. is like with that and the umbilical cord. Mm. Mm, that's an interesting question. I always wondered about the umbilical cord and, you know, uh, just, just that whole connection there with our stomach and the way God did that. Yeah, that's interesting to think about. We're fed by Jesus too, you know. We're fed now with the bread of life. So he is, he's what feed, what's feeding us. So something, yeah, something to ponder there. The April 8th eclipse is upon us, guys, and it's becoming a multi-agency preparedness campaign. Now, we know that they did this during 9 to the 1 to the 1 as well. They had their own campaign that, that oddly mirrored exactly what took place on September of 9 of the 1 of the 1. And uh, so, kind of makes you wonder, uh, what are they really preparing for here? Is this just a coincidence? Why would they do it at the same time as, uh, as the eclipse? Uh, they're telling, warning people to stock up on food ahead of the solar eclipse. The National Guard is getting involved. So that's not just hearsay from videos. That's also in the news, um, which is what we see here. You know, in New York City, New York to send National Guard. Uh, Georgia Army National Guard deploys soldiers from Forth, Forsyth. And, uh, but, but here specifically for the eclipse. Um, so kind of intriguing here. The total solar eclipse is coming, and several McLennan County agents are preparing for many tourists and visitors. Now, I don't know if it's just a... You know, hey, there's a lot of people going to come into town. Is that a way to cover for what they're really doing? But it is interesting. They're telling you to stock up on food. So any thoughts about this? Well, they're, all, they're also closing schools, too, which I've never mm. had to miss school for an eclipse. So. Yeah, why would you close a school for something that lasts before. four minutes, right? It just seems uh, kind of silly. Yeah. Um, it's over before you know it. So, you know, before, before you're done. So is it because it's going to last longer than four minutes? It's not, it's not, it's going to be a short thing. It's going to be a longer thing. Yeah. I heard that as well. Like they're telling us for just over four minutes, but some people are saying, uh, yeah, more like three days or four days. It's so fascinating. Yeah. And, and, and the devil comet will be also visible. Yeah. That's right. What is it? What's oh, supposed to be four so, days? Something happened the here. Eclipse? Yeah, there's some people are saying, oh, it's going to be much longer than what they're they're saying it's going to be. Mm. Had some activity you know what else? on my screen. Mm. Go ahead. I also read that it was um, it's the same path as 16,000 lightning strikes. Mm. The Which same is, path. What, what do you mean by that as 16,000 lightning strikes that are going to happen that have happened? That I think have happened, maybe. Mm. I have to go back. To you say 16,000? Yeah, it's some ridiculous number. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So was that so God warning us at that time as well? Kind of giving us a, a foreshadowing? What was what was to come? Yeah. That's hmm. what I'm wondering. I'll see if I can find it. Well, I found it interesting when I looked at this, uh, you know, Jesus is the Aleph and the Tav. And when I looked at this, this Tav from, you know, back in a thousand BC, it's oddly at the exact same angle. You know what I mean? It's like an X, but it's not quite like level. It's not a level X. You know what I mean? It seems to be like it's a, right. it's a, the same angle as these eclipses are. Isn't that weird? Oh, I don't know if you, yeah. you guys can tell what I mean by that. But, um, you know, if you go back here, it's like, you know, it's an X, but it's kind of tilted. Yeah, we can see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can see that, right? And uh, you yeah. can kind of see it here too, right? It's kind of tilted. It's not quite, I don't know. Seems it seems to be roughly on the same angle, same trajectory as uh, as this wow. this uh, X is too. Kind of intriguing. Kind of that, that angle X, but uh, like this one. This one, for example, looks looks 
kind of angled that way. So Jesus said famously, I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the alpha and the omega. And that's in the Latin, the, you know, in the, uh, the Greek alphabet, alpha, omega. But he would have said that actually originally in Aramaic, it, 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 would, it would seem, because that's the language that he actually spoke. They actually spoke. Uh, so would he have said Aleph and Tav to indicate the beginning and the end of the alphabet, of the Hebrew alphabet? And, uh, and this looks like both an Aleph and a Tav that we're experiencing here. So that's kind of intriguing. I am the Aleph and the Tav. So. Yeah. Oh, Tika was just saying that it intersects in, it intersects in Rapture, in Indiana. <laughs> that's Illinois. perfect. And Nineveh, Indiana right. is the other one. Indiana's yeah. really getting it, you know? And Little Egypt, cool. Illinois. Um, yeah, there's a lot of Ninevehs going on. And, and Nineveh, Indiana is one of the best places to see it, supposedly. Um, and uh, But that's cool. Rapture, Indiana as well. That's perfect. That's very interesting. What time do you see it's going to be here? Uh, well, it depends on where you are at what time. Let me see here. Uh, time of eclipse. How come we don't see it in California? They see it over there. You have to be like right under it. Otherwise you, you see the side of the sun. Like you don't see the, you know, you don't see it blocked, but it does. It's not really logical. It kind of shows you that it's, that the sun is very close because if the sun was really far away, it would, the, 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 the line would be much broader. It would seem and cover the whole earth, you know? So, you know what I mean? If you think about it, you cast a shadow and it's far away and the moon, the farther you get, the more you pull that object, the bigger the shadow gets. So it really kind of points to a, a local sun, a local moon, you know, that are very close, but you know, you know, you don't get sunspots on clouds from suns that are far away either. You know, you, they would cast their rays across the whole earth. Um, so it really points to it being very close. In, in my, in my, you know, the way it hits me anyway, it doesn't really make right, sense. It doesn't make sense, facts. but I'm, I'm open to hearing other thoughts on that. Uh, but time eclipse, time of the eclipse, uh, 2024, uh, doesn't give it, let's see. It's, it's okay. I'll look, I'll look it up. It's going to begin at one twenty seven, but maybe it's one twenty six because that would be alpha and omega, Aleph and Tav of the English alphabet, mm. A mm. to Z. And it will also be, it's also the number of God because he's 26. He's, he's one. He, the, here, O Israel, the Lord is one. And he's also 26, which is God is 26 in Gematria in both English and in um, Hebrew, I believe. Is it Hebrew or is it, uh, which? Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think so. yod heh vav -Hey. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of cool. So it begins in Texas at 120, I'm, I'm going to say 126, just for fun. And we'll end in Maine mm -hmm. at 335, or is it 334, or is it 333? That would be even more perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who knows? I mean, you know, they always, they always throw these numbers out, and it's always kind of a, a guesstimate because, you know, it's like defined beginning, you know, is it, it says the totality will begin. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see when it actually ha when it happens. But, uh, but that's kind of interesting. So that would be, that'd be two hours roughly. That's going to last. So that's cool. Oh, John Dominey in the chat just said he's in Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and tornadoes came through recently through the same path of the eclipse. Clearly mm. a sign from God and was trying to tell them that. That's crazy. That's cool. Wow. I feel Tornets. bad for people who live on the path because <laughs> they're really getting it. It's so like they're really good. Well, like, they're gonna dig a trough well, right there. If you look at the eclipse, the sign of Jonah, forty days would be May eighteenth, and oh, that's right. May nineteenth is the Pentecost. That's right. Yeah, Jesus yeah. We talked ascended. about that a few times here. Yeah, that's right. May nineteenth yeah. is, mm -hmm. is the Pentecost. Um, so yeah, so we have that to look forward to as well. Um, any other thoughts on that? I put a couple of the the things that I found about the lightning. They call them lightning bolts. 
in the chat. Lightning, Lightning bolts. bolts. Yeah. Okay. What? Sixteen thousand though is the number. I don't understand where that's coming from, but um, but they're being it's being talked about. Mm-hmm. Is this the um, uh, this Reddit post? Is that the one? Yeah. Okay. And what's I'm the one? To read it. The one right above it. Um, just another one that talks about it being sixteen thousand bolts across. Okay, a path of totality one. spanning over 1,200 miles. Um, okay. So I, I, I'm i curious what they're talking about. I'll have to look more into it, and maybe we can mm. revisit it next. Okay. That sounds good. Interesting. Yeah. So 16,000 right. lightning strikes and a potential earthquake across America. Thanks. Okay. Wow. That's interesting. And what's the one right, right above it? Is it is something else? The link? I think it's included. It's the same. I think the second link has the same information in it, so it's just a repeat. Okay. Is that text or video? Mm, text. Okay. Uh, let's see what we get. Eclipse has identical 16,000 lightning bolts. Very sus. <laughs> Where to see the total solar eclipse? Okay. Interesting. Actually bizarre. I'm not just saying that. This will be one of the more notable severe storm nights in March. In recent memory, in the past hour, over 16,000 individual lightning bolts from western New York to north, northeast Texas spanning over 12,000 plus miles. Huh. So it sounds like it happened know, in, right? in, the last, in the past hour? It's almost like a foreshadowing? So this, this is two yeah, days. Maybe. Yeah, what day is this? This is two days ago. And his name is Noah. And his name is Noah <laughs> to report the news. <laughs> He's a preacher of righteousness. He's he's warning the people. Wow. So this is on March 17th, two days ago. So March 15th. So roughly, uh, what would that be? 15 days plus another seven days, maybe uh, 21 days, maybe kind of a three three week warning there beforehand. Mm -hmm. 22 days. Uh, that, that the lightning bolts would have come down, according to what he's saying there. But I don't know. This was posted this says two days ago, so I'm just guessing that that was what it's from. But who knows? Yeah. All right, that'd be interesting. We should take a deeper look at that one. Okay, so Jesus, Aleph, and the Tav. So is this when Jesus is going to appear? The beginning and the end. Is he going to appear when the Aleph and Tav come to into view? Uh, is it the is it the sign is this the sign of the Son of Man? Is can you consider the Aleph and Tav the sign of the Son of Man? And it's in the in the sky because it's the moon, forming it. Something to consider. There, okay. And then around the same time, hey, we, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say I was reading Psalm one nineteen this week, which is laid out as an uh, uh, an acrostal poem. Mm -hmm. Where it goes from A to Tav, Alpha to Tav. Well, that's true. And it's Psalm 119, which backwards is 911. Mm. It's a warning. The Lord is warning us, perhaps, in the Psalms. That's interesting. Yes, we do have uh, the Aleph and Tav here. It starts with Aleph. There it is, Psalm 119. And then it ends at Tav. If we can go all the way down to the end here. Uh, there's Tav right there. May my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. Wow. Interesting way to end that psalm. It's a very powerful psalm. Longest psalm in the Bible. And it's a lot about, you know, really meditating and, and applying the word of God and meditating in the law, meditating on the words of God and, and storing them in your heart. Um, so, and it goes the whole is, um, Hebrew alphabet. Yeah, that's right. Every stanza is a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. All 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet are there. So mm -hmm. we may want to go read that and explore that a little bit more. And then we've got billions of biblical cicadas coming on the scene. So that's also, uh, so kind of apocalyptic. Um, the thing about cicadas is after, if it rains a lot, you can always expect more cicadas. So if it's raining a ton, then there's going to be a ton more. Ooh, perfect. That's the rule. 
and it's a spring, it's a spring thing. So it could come as early as late April, I, I read here. Now, they claim the cicadas don't really bite you or anything like that. However, there is a cicada killer wasp that comes around the time of cicadas. And, uh, you know, I couldn't help but think about Revelation 9 where they talk of these locusts that go around stinging people for five months and, uh, and said on their heads they wore something like crowns of gold. Now, these wasps' heads are kind of golden, uh, you know, not sure they quite fit the whole description there of, of sharp teeth and, and human hair and things like that, but they do have sort of a golden uh, aspect to them. So something to consider. They don't, they're not usually ones that bite humans. I did watch a video of some guy stinging himself with one, and he said it was pretty painful, but it didn't last very long. Um, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but the more cicadas, I imagine the more cicada killer wasps you're going to get to go along with it. Um, or... Is it the cicadas a cover for something else? You know, is, is this a cover for... Now, cicadas are here in America. We have a map here of where they're going to appear. Um, and is this, you know, is this a cover for... I mean, it's also along the line of the eclipse, interestingly enough. If you look at it, it's kind of... The epicenter is sort of where the eclipse goes there. Um, so is there anything, any connection I was about here? to ask. I was like, how close is it to Little Egypt? Well, yeah, it looks like it goes through Little Egypt for sure. There in Illinois, um, kind of covers that whole swath, that whole area there. Um, so that's kind of intriguing, and somewhat has a biblical flavor too. Especially considering that, that there will be these locust-like creatures that are going to happen in in Acts or in uh, sorry Revelation nine. Um, so don't know, but kind of interesting that there's going to be billions more than usual. Uh, they they estimate here. In 2024, it says, uh, could be as early as late April, usually from mid-May to early June. We may see these. The brood, the brood of cicadas will be upon us. And then there was this interesting movie. I, I don't know much about it, but just happened to find it. Cicada 3301 about the dark web. And it talks about the NS to the A and, and kind of top secret you know, secrecy, espionage, that kind of thing, and, uh, you know, conspira of the sea. So, hmm, I don't know if there's any anything to it, but just thought I'd bring it up to you, see what you think about that. And uh, any thoughts about any of this? Okay. The thing where it said a brood, that was like, and we know he called the Pharisees a brood of vipers. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, the brood of cicadas. Like it's the wording where it's like, there's more to it. Yeah, why why did you choose the word brood? Why, why do we have to brood about this? Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. The explosive they predict, and most the most explosive emergence will fall, uh, in within two to three week period, mid May through early June, but they could arrive as late as eight as as early as late April. But in the spring and summer of 2024, so. We got eclipses, we got lightning bolts, we got cicadas, and they all kind of in the same area there. Um, is God trying to hit a point home here for us so we don't miss it? Interesting. Other thoughts on that one? A lot of coincidences. Mm, a lot of yeah, a lot of coincidences. <laughs> I think a lot of the stuff that I read about it, it's like a call to repentance for America. So... Yeah, I mean, you think about the plagues in Egypt. You know, God brought these plagues so that the Egyptians would repent, so that Pharaoh would change his heart and so forth. Of course, he, he continued to harden his heart. You could argue God even hardened his heart as well so that he could bring, show his glory. And, uh, you know, is God doing the same kind of thing here like Ninevites, you know, with with an eclipse? We have that Assyrian eclipse. Uh, we've got lightning bolts. We've got cicada. You know, we've got... The, kind of the equivalent of American locusts is what the cicadas are. You know, those, those are our version of the locusts, I guess you'd say. Um, and maybe the killer wasps to go with it. Um, kind of kind of something to uh, to brood upon. <laughs> to brood about. Uh, we must ponder this. So, uh, yeah. Seems biblical. Um, 5G, 5 to the G apocalypse um 
did this video some time ago, about a year ago, actually. Wow, it's been, it's been a long time. Um, and there were towers, these crazy towers that went up in New York. They're huge, they're humongous. It's like they make no sense. They're 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 bigger than people. I mean, they're just super thick and super tall. Um, and we went over a lot of things in this video, really interesting stuff about how different methods they can use to control people. And uh, I think it might have been Oriana or somebody brought this to my attention today about this graph to the fiend, to the ox, to the eye. We talk about this in the 666 video, video that I did a couple of years ago where it's believed that, that that was going in the poison um, being is distributed to people. And, uh, and people were coming up, like when you'd search for a cell tower, or search for, you know, a local network or something, these numbers would start appearing on people's phones, uh, when they're in groups of people who had taken, uh, the poison. And, uh, what they figured out is there's, they can make these things really tiny and really thin and really small, even microscopic to the point where you don't see it. It could just blend into, uh, you know, just to a liquid or something. But uh, they say you could f check this out for yourself. You can go around and, and see. But are these going, you know, if, there, if there's something to it, you know, we, we talked about the, the black lights that are showing up and street lights and uh, these towers and everything. Is everything going to be go active? You know, is this thing going to be activated? Is it a way to track people? Is it a way to control people? We don't necessarily know. But it's called the graph to the fiend antenna. So it's a thing. It's a real thing, an antenna. It's a high-frequency antenna based on graph to the fiend, a one atom thick, one atom thick. Okay, you know how small that is? You can't see it with your eyes. You know, one atom, you know, the atom of the B-O-M-B, -B, right? Uh, it's super tiny, and uh, it's microscopic. I mean, I, I, I don't know what it takes to see an atom, how, how, how much you have to, how, how, how microscopic that really is, but it's small, okay? It's small to the point where you can't see it. And it's one atom thick, two-dimensional carbon crystal designed to enhance radio communications. The unique structure... Did you know that atoms come out of speakers when, from the magnet? And when they pump, they're, they're pushing the atoms in the speakers. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Well, that, we'll, we'll get to that in a second when we talk about the magnetic black mountain. We're going to look at that too. But the unique structure of graph to the fiend would enable these enhancements. Ultimately, the choice of graph to the fiend for the basis of the nano antenna was due to the behavior of electrons. Well, you know, on that on that idea of the magnetic atoms coming out of the speaker, you know, many people reported being magnetic after they received uh, the poison, and uh, they were sticking things to their bodies and so forth. So, yeah, you may be onto something there with that magnetism. Uh, did you ever see the movie Escape from New York? I did. Yeah, and and yeah, LA. <laughs> yeah. Seeing them both. Yeah. That's... I was like, yeah, that's kind of what that sounds like. Did they did they have did they have trackers like that in their in their bodies at that time? In that movie? In the movie, I don't think yeah. it necessarily depicted that they took they something, but I do think like they had something because every time the sound would go go off at night is when they would come out in that movie. Mm, interesting. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Well, remember the picture of all the orbs that I took? What was that? Remember the I remember the picture of all the orbs that I took, and I they were coming out of the oh, spotlight. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. Spotlight, yeah. And the TV, that's that's goes in line with what this stuff. If they have magnetic stuff, and those orbs are in the air. Bling. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, maybe is are those the magnetic uh, things coming out of speakers? I don't know. That, no, no, no. Atoms are. It's it's a it's a fact when speakers. All speakers have magnets inside them. Right. That's what makes the bass. Mm -hmm. It makes them make it heavy. And when the speaker pumps, it's pushing out atoms, actually. Maybe that's why you can feel it when you're next to a speaker. You can kind of feel the oh yeah, yeah the, the gust coming out of it. Well, these are nano. You know, nano and, is and super the tiny. Day, you know, in, the clubs in, in London, your clothes bounce. Yeah. Wow. So maybe it's the atoms, the charged atoms that are kind of messing with your atoms. Maybe that's why your heart thumps inside your chest when you hear those, that low bass. It would be unfeasible to simply reduce traditional metallic antennas to nano sizes because they would require tremendously high frequencies to operate. Consequently, it would require a lot of power to operate them. Furthermore, electrons, if these 
in these traditional metals are not very mobile at nano sizes and the necessary electromagnetic waves would not form. However, these limitations would not be an issue with graph to the fiend unique ca- capabilities. A flake of graph to the fiend has the potential to hold a series of metal electrodes. Consequently, it would be possible to develop an antenna from this material. Wow. You know, we've talked a lot about graph to the fiend as I'm calling it, uh, you know, it has, it has a microfarad rating of 666. It has six sides to it. Um, it's a hexagon shape and hex actually comes back to 666, hex, hex, hex. So there's a lot there with, uh, with this. And could this be what they're al- already have put, uh, into some, uh, who are already showing up on people's, uh, frequencies, uh, detectors. So something to consider. Any other thoughts about this one? Okay. Um, so, okay. So Madonna, we know. I mean, it's it's no secret that uh, you know. I mean, she's 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 auditioning ever since she started her career. She's been auditioning for the part of the woman on the Beast, riding the Beast, right? It seems. You know, from uh, she's a long way from like a virgin. Now she's gone to uh, definitely not like a virgin at all. Um, so okay. So she's. She's riding the beast, so to speak, and, uh, and having these satanic concerts. But now she's actually quoting Revelation, so she's actually turning it into a whole satanic ceremony. I mean, I don't know whether she really believes this or she's just under, under somebody else's control to bow down to the beast. Either way, you know, it's what she's doing. So, um, so here it says she's a she's high priest. Catholic. What's that? Louis would have some thoughts on this. <laughs> What's that? Yes, she was very Catholic. She was raised Catholic. Okay. So what does that tell us? It tells us a lot. But she's not She's not really a Catholic, though. She's a... Oh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, it's a Jewish... What, it's a Jewish religion. And one of the new ones, what do they call that? The Kabbalah. The Kabbalah. She's a Kabbalah. And they oh, were yeah. mad at her because the Kabbalists were supposed to be men, but there's a new uh, a, a sect of women in, in L.A. that are Kabbalists. Hmm. Well, let's take a listen here to this, to this, and see see what see what we hear. If you guys can hear it. Okay, so I don't know if you could make that out. Are you guys able to make that out at all? Um, Not really. But uh, she was reading Revelation. Yeah, she was quoting Revelation. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, the beast yeah, was given yeah, mouth to utter proud words and blaspheme and blasphemies to exercise his authority for two months. Mm-hmm. He opened his mouth laughing. Yeah, so she was just reading. Uh, Revelation is it thirteen? Right, and that he could make war against the saints and overcome them and so forth. Yeah. So yeah, so that was definitely. So yeah, she's basically quoting Revelation, then tying it into her song "Justify My Love," I guess. Um, but it seemed like they were definitely uh, in a ritual sort of pose throughout the video and in bo- on the back screen and so forth, mm-hmm. as they're saying this and they got the fire going and, you know, kind of. There's nothing's hidden anymore. It's like in, in your face. I'm wondering, what do the concert people think about this? When they hear this stuff, are they even thinking at all? Or are they just, I mean, how lost can you be to not see what's in right in front of you? So anyway. That's scary. Yeah, there you go. So, so they're basically, you know, rock concerts have turned into satanic rituals, quoting the Bible, but basically in favor of the beast. You know, it seems that she's, you know, promoting the beast. And that uh, they will worship him in vain. She added the word in vain, I noticed this time. Um, in other words, you'll worship him, but that's not going to matter because you're still going to die. So, wow. So, so, 
as church services become more like rock concerts, I mean, is, is there a trend there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What Good life, point. you know, the, who's imitating who here? But uh, yeah, you're right. Churches are becoming rock concerts and rock concerts are becoming churches only of the devil. Uh, so we got to we got to shine the light. Right, Louie? We got to shine the light. Shine the light. Woo-hoo. So, uh, <laughs> amen. Well, I know we don't want to think too much about that darkness, but it's happening. So you should be aware of it. Um, Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of the Rings. Did you know that? That's Lord of the big. Rings. It's pretty nice, isn't that? Looks it looks really beautiful. It's like CGI almost. It's it, yeah, like almost <laughs> like like totally like a hundred percent almost. <laughs> kind of like every other picture of space, you know, uh, other than the ones right. we take from Earth, you know, uh, that we take. But uh, it's a CGI, though, right? You know, it yeah. has to be a CGI. Yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah, you know, the one the real pictures actually look like this kind of thing through water. Interestingly enough, all the stars and the plants look like you're looking through water, like the firmament or, or some something like that. Kind of interesting, uh, but uh, but they call Saturn the Lord of the Rings, and uh, if you've seen the movie Lord of the Rings, maybe you didn't realize, but they're really paying homage to the Saturn god, uh, you know, who is uh, you know known as the chief planet, I guess, and the chief god of paganism. I mean, I, I haven't studied it that much. You guys might know more about that than me, but uh, we've talked a little bit about it here, here and there. But uh, any thoughts on this about Saturn being the Lord of the Rings? Also, Saturday is Saturn Day. Oh, that's right. Saturn Day. You're right. You're right. So they took it from the Sabbath and they turned it, they gave it to Saturn instead, instead of uh, honoring God on that day. So that's a good point. Um, so the Lord of the Rings, you know, and uh, so the movie really is an allegory, as, as you know. Now, uh, somebody ordered, reordered their credit card recently and it came with Saturn on it as a picture. I don't know if that's just that's mine. coincidence. <laughs> that's yours. Yeah. I don't know if you wanted me to tell people it's that, fine. but but that's it's that's fine. yours. I, uh, I was just kind of shocked when I opened it. I was like, "Wow, they're not even hiding it anymore." But you know what is interesting is that um, he is the god of wealth, abundance, mm. um, agriculture, or agriculture, um, periodic renewal, and liberation. So. Anyway, the fact that he's the god of wealth makes makes me cringe because it's on the Visa card, right? So, mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's also the Pretty god sad. of time, and we know that Satan will try to change the times and seasons. It says here he's the god of time, generation, mm. like gignomai, or gen- this generation will not pass, dissolution, abundance, wealth, agriculture, periodic renewal, so like a, mm-hmm. a, a great of the re of the set, perhaps like a, a new to the world, to the order, a new way of doing things and liberation. Saturn's mythological reign was depicted as a golden age of abundance and peace. When they're saying peace and safety, look out. Wow. So is this going to be a new religion? Are they going to bring about Saturn religion uh, into place during the festival of Saturnalia each December? Which is where we get Christmas, right? Uh, or at least a celebration of that time, 25th. Uh, because it, it, you know, it was sort of like the Christian answer to them worshiping Saturn, uh, that we're worshiping Jesus or God, um, and celebrating the birth of Christ. So, Roman Republic, Roman Empire, the planet Saturn, the day of Saturday are both named after and were associated with him. What were you gonna say? It says roll reversals too. A time of feasting oh, and roll reversals. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Roll reversals. No wonder they're trying to make the male into a female and vice versa. Wow. Free speech. No wonder they want to control our speech. Gift giving and revelry. Interesting. Role reversals. Okay. What's revelry? <laughs> Pagan revelry. That's what they did in front of the uh, the golden calf. You know, like carousing, like it says in Galatians 5, you know, and the like. Uh, but yeah, revelry. Hmm. Yeah, we could dig a little deeper into that. Jupiter was called the son of Saturn. And Saturn is a sixth planet. There's that number six. Mm, there you go. Yeah. Six, on the six, on the six. credit card that I got, did you see that in the upper corner? There is. Can you pull that up again? Yeah. You'll see the six. Yeah. Look oh, at you're the right. Six in the upper left. You're right. Yeah. There it is. The six. Good call, Gina. So, yeah. That's right. That makes sense. 
guys both finding those things. Six, six, six. It almost looks like three sixes kind of rolled together uh-huh. there, depending on how you look at the shade, what shade they've got on there. And even Saturn itself almost looks like it's being wrapped like a six there. Mm. Mm. Good point. Crazy. Good catches. Mm. So, yes, the goddess, uh, the Saturn's associated with destruction, mm, like Apollyon, right? Apollyon is the god of destruction, the destroyer, comes out of the abyss. So Saturn's associated with Lua, destruction, dissolution, and loosening. Mm, interesting. The god of war, blooded weapons, enemies destroyed in war, and W, A to the R. Under Saturn's rule, humans enjoyed the spontaneous bounty of the earth without labor in the golden age. He became known as the god of time. So he would try to change the times and seasons. Hmm. Very interesting, very intriguing. Now... Uh, along with that, we've got this black mountain that's very mysterious. Also in the movie Lord of the Rings, they had this mysterious mountain called Mount Doom where uh, Sauron, the evil eye that sat between this tower, uh, these two towers, and, uh, and they, he, he basically lured people in. He got people to go to the mountain. And it was so he could get that ring. He wanted to get that master ring back from Frodo. And so they were lured there it's like calling them like magnetically pulling them there and there is a mountain that is believed to be in the north pole from which we get the magnetic pool it's a secret mountain kind of like this mount doom that's up called rupes nigra or black mountain or black rock where black rock the company gets its name supposedly so very interesting uh, this magnetic pull of this mountain with Lord of the Rings and uh, and this mountain being pulled in. And we know the North North Star is there and all the stars go around that North Star and we go around the North Pole and, and everything is drawn magnetically to that pole. Going back to the atoms, like Lou was talking about those magnetic atoms, you know, and the graph to the fiend that's magnetic. It's all this connection with magnetism. Very interesting. So we have some ancient maps going back to 1620 Here's a detailed map from Gerardus Mercator. I think where we, uh, yeah, the Mercator. Is that where we get the equator? No. I know this guy. I know this name from somewhere. Um, But he had a map of the Arctic showing the Rupes Nigra at the North Pole. Right there. So they say it's a secret because it doesn't even show up on our modern maps, right? They say there's really nothing there. But in actuality, perhaps there is something there. Any thoughts about this? Well, one thing about Saturn, um, a day on Saturn is 10.7 hours, which we know what happened on 10-7. Mm, interesting. October 7th is the day not only that Putin was born, but uh, it was the day that the Al to the Ak of the Su flood took place um, as well. A, a week before the eclipse that makes the full Aleph of the Aleph and the Tav on 1014. So yeah, good point. And this even looks like a Mount Doom picture. It looks like you could have taken this out of the Lord of the Rings book. Uh, but this is actually for the Rupes Nigra, this volcano at the North Pole in Jules Verne. Oh, this is from Jules Verne, The Adventures of Captain Hunteris. Okay, interesting. So maybe it was based on that. So I don't know, any other thoughts on this one? Kind of curious, but of course, infamous Black Rock is known for nefarious things. And uh, is this their way of wink, wink? We know something you don't about what's really pulling your compass to the North Pole. The Black Rock. Oh yeah, and don't they have the the room with the giant magnet in it? Are they the ones that have that? Oh, maybe they do. Do they? Let's see. I think they do. Hmm. (laughs) If I remember right. Let's take a look at that. So, Black Rock. Their headquarters. Magnet. Rome. Let's see if we find, see something. And have you seen pictures of it? Now yeah, they, they I have. do. They, now, here's Black Rock Health. Is this like the med of the bed? Is this the healing oh, I spa? Bet. Um, so, you've seen a picture of it before? Yes, I have. Um, and what does it look like? It's kind. It's like in the shape of a. 
strangely enough. It's like a pyramid shaped room mm. with a giant black magnet in the middle of it. Well, there's lots of maps showing up for this black rock. Let me, let me take a look at this mm -hmm. one real quick. Uh, this is interesting. So this is, can't see that very well, but, um, huh. So they're showing a black, it's almost like a little mini earth up there or something. They're showing like a little, a little, uh, center to everything there. What is this on tradition on the black rock at the North pole? It is said in the book concerning the fortune discovery that at the Arctic Pole there is a high, magne high magnetic rock 33 German miles in circumference. 33, mind you. A surging sea surrounds this rock as if the water were discharged downward from a vase through an opening. Hmm. It's almost like uh, Garden of Eden or something with the four rivers. You know, the, the Euphrates, the Pishon, the Gihon, and the, uh -huh. the Tigris. And so the conception of the North Pole as a black magnetic mountain, make this a little bigger, surrounded by a circular continent divided by four powerful rivers is quite old, maybe even going back to the first man, but was perhaps first somewhat extensively described in, in the lost 14th century book called the Inventio Fortunata. It is, of course, possible that there are earlier more extensive descriptions which were not written down, or if written down, completely lost to time. The first... Summary of this book is also lost, but luckily it was so influential that all the maps made in the following centuries feature this conception of the North Pole. Here we will not make any claims about the corporeal appearance of the current North Pole, but rather try to apprehend the symbolic meaning of the features as described by the ancients and medievals. To begin with the rock itself, it's obvious that it symbolizes the prime matter. Its color, or rather absolute lack of color, symbolizes its relative indistinctness. Its location is the center of the Earth. Right, and on a flat Earth, guys, I mean, think about it. If, if, if indeed the Earth were to be flat, and I'm not making any claims, I'm simply presenting yeah. the concepts, but if it were, it would be logical for there to be a center uh, magnetism, a magnet at the center so that everybody kind of knew where they were on that Earth, right? Um, and uh, for it to be at the middle, you know, where everything would point to the center. Uh, so you kind of know, you could, you could kind of figure out where you are based on that. Its magnetic properties represent the ability to attract and repel all things from itself. It's a mother of all things. Lastly, it's described as being 33 uh, miles in circumference. This number is obviously quite the symbolic one. Uh, now, they're, they're talking about the age of our Lord and when he perished, the highest may of the sown grade, uh, three being the number of heaven, 33 the heaven of heavens. Interesting. Okay. So... I found the picture. I put it in the chat. Um, oh, okay, cool. But Carrie also, she was talking about, I think some, oh, 117 Gungner in the YouTube chat is saying that Black Rock also is called Mount Maru. Mount Maru. Ooh. What does that mean? Does that mean something? I have no idea. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this. All right, so... Here's the picture that you have of this magnetic room. And they call it the meditation room, which ironically is a giant magnet. <laughs> okay. So weird. The magnet room. It's a magnet room. It is kind of pyramid shaped. I mean, they put uh -huh. that, that painting there. I don't know if the corner goes farther. It looks like maybe it cuts off there, but, but it's kind of a pyramid that would be missing the capstone. That would be if the capstone's right. been cut off. So that is that is an odd room. And that's supposedly like a giant magnet in that room? Mm-hmm. That, man, I wonder what yeah. that would do if you are if you have a huge magnet, how that would pull on your body, you know, if it would pull on the metal, like Magneto, if it would pull on the metals in your body or pull on the, the things in your body, the atoms in your body. That's intriguing. In that, in that middle part, do you see that where it's like half dark, half light, but it's a circle? Like, let's say the eclipse? Um, in this room? Yeah, like straight. The painting? Oh, I wish I could. Right there. Yeah. And it right looks there. like DNA. It looks like a DNA strand. Too. Oh, no, not that part. Are we talking about the, the painting at the end of the room? To the left. To the left. Are we talking about like the same center. thing? <laughs> Are we in the same picture? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
I wish I could just. So we're looking at like a box. It looks like it's zoom in like a card on wheels or something that. here. This, I guess, the <laughs> magnet. And then we have some sort of Picasso type painting on the wall or something like that. So what are you referring to? Hold on. Okay. So there's like a carpet underneath the magnet or something. Shot of what I'm looking at. <laughs> just post it. Okay. Well. Okay. And so this may not be in the Black Rock headquarters, but it, I think it's in the United Nations. Mm, okay. They have it on the United Nations. But it is a it is a maybe. Black Rock, and so it's sort of like, and it makes you think about Islam because they have a Black Rock too that they circle around mm -hmm. the Kaaba, as it's called, yep. the Black Cube. And so what is the connection between all these, you know, this, these black rocks are, seem all to be connected to each other. Um, they're all worshiping. And also, if you remember Space Odyssey 2001, there was a black obelisk that they all kind of came and were, were drawn by this sound that drew them to this, these black obelisks in that movie. Um, so there's kind of a yeah. symbolism there. We were talking last time about the black symbiote fluid, like from Spider-Man and, and that kind of stuff. It was also kind of magnetic in nature, and uh, black goo. the black yeah. goo, yeah. So is there is there a connection between all of this? Interesting. Yeah. All right, I put it in the chat. Okay. Um, and and what is this oh, a picture? I, I see the picture now. So what what is this? That's the same picture. Oh, you're like the eclipse. At, the the eclipse. Of it. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Let's see if I can back off. So oh, you know what's funny? It says. The one black dot or half circle brings the visitor's eye to a point of rest. <laughs> mm. The abstract design was decided upon to align with the room's interfaith purposes where people could withdraw into themselves regardless of their faith, creed, or religion. Many varied groups collected to become the friends of the UN Meditation Room and contributed it, um, contributed to its renovation and upkeep so it's almost like a one world religion hmm. type hmm. fascinating wow so they've already got the one world religion going they just haven't brought it to the world mm -hmm. yet it's already happening in this room but where are you supposed to I mean there's no place is there a place to sit maybe we can't see the whole room but uh, what are you supposed are to you do supposed in to this room on the magnet I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. yeah get magnetized <laughs> come have a seat on the magnet yeah, that's kind of strange. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I'm not sure what that means. Um, um, I'm looking at like it, just the whole thing within the clips where it's you're literally covering the sun up, like it's the same concept, but also specifically in how they presented that it really mm -hmm. is the duality, which we know what that means. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Any other thoughts on this one? Okay. And then, uh, don't cry for me, Argentina. They are, the leader of Argentina is calling for the rebuilding of the third temple, or at least he seems to be implying that. He read, he read the story of the fox. There's a, there's a famous prophecy about a fox being seen in the temple. And when that's seen, that means they're going to rebuild the third temple and so forth. So he read that when he visited uh, recently. And people are saying, oh, he's calling for the destruction of the Al to the Ak of the Sa. And, uh, and so... And I sent you a, a picture of that one that happened. You it did? was actually a fox on the wall. Yeah. Mm, back, okay. Um, last fall i think yeah i remember mm -hmm. i remember us looking at that in another video um yeah. so yeah the the fox that they did see a fox recently in uh in israel uh on the wall and so they they saw it as a sign so this guy is sort of bringing it back up again so kind of interesting that he's uh, talking about that if anybody wants to t share anything about the third temple so I think green is people. Oh. We've been talking about this for a while, but uh, I guess there's new evidence that they found. Yeah, did you want to share something? Okay. Yeah, it, the the fox ironically was on Tishbav, was when it was found. Oh, that's was right. When it was seen. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Yeah, it was the ninth of Av. Yeah, that was last year. Um, yeah, so so they've been looking at that prophecy for a while. 
Um, I guess they found new evidence. Uh, they've been shutting down a lot of food plants lately. Um, and supposedly they're trying to cover their tracks because they've been finding stuff you don't want to find in the food that you eat. Um, human D to the N to the A and rat D to the N to the A found. I mean, this is like mainstream news just reporting this. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, CBS News, you know, uh, a tooth was found. <laughs> okay. Um, but, uh, you know, but supposedly they're finding stuff in sausages and burgers and uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, if, if, if the warning of stay away from fast food, it wasn't strong enough already, uh, this, this could kind of drive it home for you. But here's a list of 100 meat processing facilities that supposedly have been burned down in the last, between 2020 and 2022. And uh, from complaints of people finding all kinds of human-related stuff in their food, um, from Tyson's Food, Sullivan Food, Smithfield's Food, JBS, Wheat, West Liberty, Shearer's, Azure, Taylor Farms, Gem State, uh, uh, Deli Star, Agristar, Cargill, Rio Fresh, Kellogg's, JBS, Made Right, Tyson, Cargill, Nicely, Walmart, etc. So, let that be a warning to you, I guess. Um, I don't know. Anybody have any... Uh, any personal experience with this? That should be more than a warning. That's like right. When I was growing up, if we saw found out something like that, my my parents would be there trying to close them down. You know I mean, that's yeah, like, cannibalism. That's you know, it's not something you want to participate in, especially unknowingly. <laughs> it's it's not something or you really want to do, ever. But uh, especially when you don't even know you're doing it. Um. So yeah. So, okay. Hmm. A moment of silence. It speaks to the volume, the volume of evil that is <laughs> happening. Doesn't, so, doesn't it say in, uh, in the Bible, if we know something's going on and we don't do something about it? Well, that's what we're doing. We're good. reporting it. You know, we're doing, I mean, if there's something, yeah. if there's more we can do, then by all means. I want to do more. Do more. <sighs> Turn over the money changer tables. Whip them. Yes. Get out of my burger. You know. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, if you can do more, do, by all means. But uh, knowing is half the I battle, I guess. Do it. Yeah, kind of kind of oh. scary stuff. Larry just said um, Mount Meru is the center of Earth in, in Hindu, Hindu uh, Buddhism. So that's where that came from. Mount Meru? About the, yeah, the oh. Black Mountain. Oh. Sorry, I'm a little slow to respond to that. Oh. Okay, so but Mount Maru is a different mountain than the one we're talking about. Do they? Where's Mount Maru located? Tanzania. Tanzania. I believe. Okay. Yeah. Tanzania, Mount Maru, Kilimanjaro. It's seventy kilometers west of Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. Okay. So. Uh, in Tanzania, that's Africa, that's Africa. Let's see, show map of Africa. Okay, so it's about there on Africa, if you can see that. Oh, it disappears when I do that. So it's on the eastern coast there of Africa. And, uh, which is also kind of center of the earth, arguably. You know, the cradle of civilization coming out from that area with Noah and the, and the gang and the fam. So, yeah, okay. Interesting. Uh, other thoughts about anything so far? Or anything that we haven't talked about? Anything you wanted to talk about tonight? Any, any comments from uh, YouTube or anybody? Vincent put... Oh, the Beatles. Oh, go ahead. Of oh, the Beatles. Yeah, we're getting to right. it. We're getting to it. We're getting to it. We're not done yet. <laughs> Vincent put a photo of football stadiums... Um, in the Discord chat, yeah, I think I think I think they're like football from the UK, if I remember right. Oh wow! Um, but they're all, you know they all look like eyeballs. All the all-seeing eye. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, let me let me share that. That looks pretty. Because they're rich, right? They treat um, every all these sporting events. 
rituals. Wow, 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 wow. That is interesting. Back off a little bit so you can see that a little better. So the the football stadiums are really all seeing eyes. Look at that. Or the eye of Horus. It's really what it looks mm -hmm. like too. Even that, that one on the upper left even looks like it has that little part of the eye of Horus that comes around the top there. Mm -hmm. And we can look at the eye, weird, eye of Horus to compare compare that. Let's see. Eye of Horus. So there's the eye of Horus, and you notice it has that eyelash or eyelid that kind of comes around the top there. And uh, so that's their god they're worshiping there. And so they, so that, like I said, that one on the upper left, actually the one underneath them too, kind of seems like it has that extra eyelid or lash or something going around. Wow, that's interesting. There it is, the eye of Sauron. It's looking out of your football stadium, up at the eclipse. It's almost like going back to. You know, the Nazca lines, if you guys are familiar with the Nazca lines, like where they would build these huge pictures out of stones that only someone way up above could see. Mm. Um, yeah. The Nazca lines, you know, you'd see it on a show like Ancient Aliens or something like that. But the Nazca lines are these pictographs that... Like here's a spider, for example. It's like huge, like it's like miles long that you can't see it. If you're on the ground, you can't see it. The only way you could see it is if you're way up above. And yet how do they how do they make them? How do they make them symmetrical and how do they keep them all in line? And all it is is they're taking like the stone gravel and like removing that area of stone to, to reveal like a white path. And so it makes the picture. And uh, there's lots of different types of these. Whoops. Uh, who were the Nazca? But let me see. Let me go back here for a second. Because uh, there are actually s some really interesting ones. Like there's some where they're like waving. Like they're waving to someone in the sky. Like this one. He's like a, a person waving. And I think they're like, oh, wow. I think they're like miles long. If I, if I'm remembering correctly. That like could the, be a real like, person. There's monkeys and Giant. things like that. Yeah, I mean, is it made for giants? Is it made? Is it UFO type stuff? Is it? Is it? You know, or, or alien or demons, angels? You know, are, are they communicating with God? What What is it all about? So it's kind of interesting. But it makes me think of that when I see those football stadiums shaped like eyes. Like, who's really seeing this from above? And uh, and they're super long. Let's see, Nazca lines, the length. Let me see how long they are. Uh, in total, there are over 800 straight lines, 300 geometric figures, and 70 animals. That they're, they range from 50 to 1,200 feet. Okay, so maybe they're not miles. Well, no, uh, the straight lines run up to 30 miles. There it is. Some of the straight lines run up to 30 miles. 30 miles? How do you make a straight line 30 miles, first of all? <laughs> I mean, you know, with just rocks, you know, just like scraping rocks. Um, how, you know, how crazy is that? So, uh, and then... The biomorphs range from 50 to 1,200 feet in length. So that's like the, I think the pic, the pictures as large as the Empire State Building. So wild. Why the Nazca Lines are among Peru's greatest mysteries. So the Nazca Lines, very interesting um, to consider. Okay. Here's an aerial pictograph of a monkey with a really, a really swirly tail. Almost looks like that infinity circle what, what do they call that where it kind of swirls together like that it's uh, one of the Nazca lines taken in 2015 shows the design knows the monkey and there's all kinds of different ones but anyway I thought that was kind of interesting okay well it kind of goes along with your, uh, your your football stadiums there okay mm -hmm. Louis favorite we got to get to who's the real Paul McCartney da 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 <laughs> And what does it have to do with end times? Well, I think it has to do with covers, you know, cover ups. Is, is there a cover up going on here? Well, interestingly, uh, you know, which kind of ties into everything, I suppose, all the lies we've been told. But Italian researchers employ forensics to solve the fall Paul mystery. McCartney's appearance, voice, and personality remarkably changed in 1966. Forensic science proves Paul McCartney was replaced. So the guy you know as Paul, according to this scientific study, is really Fall. 
Forensic science has proven that Paul McCartney was replaced in 1966. A scientific team in Italy consisting of Francesco Gaffazzini and Gabriella Carlesi conducted a biometrical analysis of Paul pre- and post-1966. The scientists saw discrepancies of the facial features that could not be accounted for by error or plastic surgery. So, um, right, because some things are just structural, like like the cranium being larger, you know, and longer, and, you know, eyes being different distances apart and things like that. These pictures from 1966 show the great resemblance between Paul McCartney on the left and William Shears Campbell at the in the right at the time of McCartney's alleged death. Wow. I mean, yeah, they do look remarkably similar. Um, now, why another interesting thing to note here is uh, George Harrison actually seemed to confess this at the at the induction ceremony. And uh, I'm not the only one who he- has heard, heard this. If you do a search online, you'll see lots of people bring this up. Um, but he seems to confess. And don't worry, we're going to still get to some gematria and stuff. But this is just kind of a fun thing to add in here about cover-ups. But uh, he seems to confess this when he says, uh, he says, we on the stage are the only ones left, him and Ringo. Him and Ringo are the ones that accepted the Hall of Fame award. He looks very kind of uh, concerned in what he's sharing. He's not really happy. He's kind of like wondering if people are going to understand what he says and, and maybe a little worried about that they might understand what he's saying. But then he says something very cryptic here. He says, we miss... Oh, let me see what he says here. If I can... I suppose basically the reason we became the band. Let me see. Uh, it's what's left, I'm afraid. But uh, and it's hard really to stand here, supposedly representing the Beatles. Uh, it's what's left, I'm afraid. Okay, so he says that him and Ringo are what's left of the Beatles. In other words, both John and Paul are no longer here, is what he's indicating. And now they translate it as we all love Paul very much. But if you listen closely. You hear the D in there. He says, But um, we all loved him so much, and we all love Paul very much. I don't know if you could hear that, but he says, We all loved him, talking about John Lennon, and we all loved, past tense, Paul very much. Now, you could say, Well, maybe he's just saying because he left the band or something like that. But uh, but the way the look on his face almost seems like he's, he's trying to drive something home. What's that? Yeah. So this is. He was still in the band. That, no, not not this time. This is nineteen eighty eight, actually, where they're accepting this award. So this is after they oh. they broke up. Kind of think I think it was like early, like nineteen eighty or some somewhere around there. I think is when they broke up. But uh, I thought I thought when when bands get awards, they just come together. Even if most bands are broken up anyway, but you know what I mean. They're yeah. Come together. To get yeah. The award. But uh, he says, you know, uh, we're all this left, and he says we love John very much, and we loved Paul very much, and then he has this kind of look of like. You know what I mean by that. <laughs> so, anyway, just kind and of a fun brother, one to throw in there. I appreciate Louie bringing that show. to my attention. It's kind of fun. Um, for all you music lovers out there. But I think it just kind of shows the whole thing of, man, though your whole life could be fake, man. Everything you think you know could be totally wrong. It's all just a lie, you know? And so, thank God we have the Bible. Thank God Jesus says we'll never lose the word of God. Not the least stroke will ever disappear because it's the one thing we can rely on in a world of lies. But I uh, just thought that was kind of interesting. So you might want to go back and listen to that. We all loved him very much, and we all loved... It. If you listen close, you hear a D in there. Loved Paul very much, past tense. So kind of interesting. Um, because technically, the Paul McCartney that we know would still be alive and is supposedly still alive at this time. Um, so, But according to those Italian forensics, it's not the same guy. I know we got a lot of Beatles fans riled up right now, but uh, just kind of an interesting thing to think about. Okay, any other thoughts on that one? Two, two weeks later after this, Paul McCartney accepted, uh, presented the award to Mick Jagger. Oh, that's uh, weird, because Mick Jagger's standing right there, too. He's, he's, he's actually part of this ceremony. Um, yeah, Mick Jagger presented it here. Well, you know, here here you have a lot of people that quote it as, we all loved Paul very much. 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 Not love, but loved, past tense. And, and we're all that's left of the Beatles, me and Ringo. So there you go. Something to consider there. Um, okay. So let's look at a couple other things here. Um, 
Anything else on that one? I don't know if anybody wants to share anything on that. But uh, it's kind of a fun, fun thing to share. Uh, NASA stands for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. That's what they claim. Okay, that's the full name. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, right? That is their full title. That's what they claim. Um, well, according to Gematria, if you, put, if you take National Aeronautics and Space Administration, you get 666. In reverse Gematria, which is interesting because uh, you know, and also 26 is in there and 444. That's interesting things there. But 666 in reverse, which in Satanism, they always do things in reverse, you know, like even the Beatles did back masking, Paul is dead on their album and things like that. So uh, confessing it to you supposedly right there. Um, but here is the NASA uh, and they their name equals 666. Exactly. Now... Um, and and of course, then then you have you know their their logo looks like the the tongue of a snake and you know lots there's been lots of plays playoffs of that but uh, just thought I'd share that with you any any thoughts about that all right and uh, and then some interesting things on um, and then I'll talk about the calendar briefly here before we wrap up too but uh, uh, interesting thing is on translate um, that we've been we've been taking words and putting them in the Latin translate. To English and it's kind of cool what they translate to so when you take belief and you break it up into be and leaf you get be love so that's what we're to be you know when we believe in the Lord we're to be love God is love that's really cool and then faith is fa ith and that means do it I love that just do it so uh you know, faith is about doing, you know, saving faith is about living it out, right? You're not, as, as it says in James, you're justified by what you do and not by faith alone, as many falsely report. But uh, faith, faith really means to do it in Latin. And you think about the Latin Vulgate, it makes me think about the Latin Vulgate translated by Jerome, uh, all the words there, but faith, do it. Okay, that's kind of cool. And then one more here, hope is H hope is with help from Latin is with help. So we get by with little help from our, our Lord, you know, the Lord helps us. He's our hope, right? And he's our help. So it's really interesting when you translate these words from Latin into English, what they actually mean. And, uh, you know, our English, our English language is Latin based, right? So, um, kind of, kind of tells you something there. Any thoughts on that? What, what language did uh, Jesus speak? Aramaic, which is like a, a you know, sort of a, a common form of uh, Hebrew, like a, like a dialect of Hebrew. Um, okay, Aramaic. So, yes, just, there's three languages in the Bible, Aramaic, Hebrew, and ancient Greek. And so those are the three languages that you find in Scripture. But most of it's translated well, into Greek. Because that was sort of the common language, It'd be like everything being translated into English, because that's the common language that most people speak. So that's why they wrote the Bible in ancient Greek. So Enoch, interesting. What's that? I said interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. So uh, Mark shared this. Appreciate that. Um, but Enoch walked with God, then he was no more because God took him away, and that was in Genesis five twenty four. Now we know, as Gina brought up again tonight, that um, Pentecost is coming up uh, on the uh, 19th of May, right, according to the English calendar. And, uh, and so we've got May the 5 and 24. So Pentecost is a feast that lasts for usually a week, I believe is what they, they give the Pentecost. It's, it's a day, but technically they stretch that out. Um, so that's something to consider that, you know, and it's also the year 24. So we're, it's, it's 2024. The fifth month says Enoch walked with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. So um, something to consider there, you know, 40 days after the beginning of this month, and uh, something I forgot to bring up, and that is, are, is there going to be something that happens here? Um, I think I had it on the other 
page, but I had something here. I think I skipped over it somewhere. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to find it or not, but, uh, you know, are we starting a new era here? Because, you know, the Hebrew calendar kicks in um, and it's, you know, Tav means the end. Well, I think we, we talked briefly about, you know, Tav meaning the end of things, but it's also the end of the year. I think I forgot to mention that point. Um, so Tav means end. And, uh, and so the last day of the last month of the Hebrew calendar happens the same day as the eclipse, if I'm remembering correctly. Let me go here to Hebrew calendar. Um, so, you know, is there a new beginning that's going to happen along with this eclipse? Is that is that's what's being signaled here? If we go into April, we get April 8th, April 9th. It's the last day of Adar, which is the last month of the Hebrew calendar. And we start this new year. Uh, you know, Israel is turn, about to turn 76. You know, Abraham was 75 when he entered the promised yeah. land. Yeah? You going to say something? No, I didn't realize that was the first of Nisan. Yeah. On the 9th. Um, yeah, the 9th is the first of Nisan. So Nisan is the first mm-hmm. month of the calendar. And I've done some videos on, here on Mikhail Messenger. I encourage you to check them out because um, they're very uh, applicable uh, on Nisan 10 and Aviv and all these about when does the year start and everything. I think you get a lot out of those. Um, but uh, but this is lining up so perfectly to the first of the year, uh, April 8th being the eclipse and then the 9th is the first day. Is, is this the Tav? Is this the end? And Is this the end of something and the beginning of something new? Is this the beginning of the Great Tribulation, for example? Um, you know, so there was another image I wanted to share with you here. Let's see if I can bring it up really quick. If anybody wants to share anything, I want to look for that. Um, yeah, just in, interest. Oh, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead, go, go. No, please. Um, interesting on the May. I'm uh, sorry, March 29th and 30th is the Shabbat Para, which is the Sabbath of the red heifer. Mm. Yeah, which is what ten days before that. All right, Shabbat Parah. Is it on? Is it on this calendar here? Can you go back really quick, just one to that um, screen where you just showed that circle? Yeah, I'm gonna go back there in just a second. Half, um, whatever that is. But I just wanted to respond to what Gina was saying. So Shabbat Parah uh, is the it's Shabbat the of the red heifer. Wow. Yeah, right before. Yes. Interesting. So do you think, do we think that they're going to try to sacrifice the red heifer at this time? I think they're trying to. They are trying to. Mm-hmm. The Sabbath Don't of the red heifer. Don't they need a temple? Uh, no, because they, they want to do it uh, so that they can have it for the temple, to purify the temple. They want to do it on the mountain across from where the temple is, across from the temple mount. Yeah. Um, so they have a, they have an altar that they've built. They have a ramp. We talked about that last time and, and, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. They're that, already mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shabbat Parah, Sabbath of the red heifer takes place on the Shabbat before Shabbat HaKodesh, which is basically the Sabbath, uh, preceding the new year or the new month. HaKodesh is a new month. Uh, but uh, but in this case, it'll also be the new year in preparation for Passover. Numbers 19, 1 through 22 describes the Parah Ad- Aduma, red heifer, in the Jewish temple as part of the manner in which the ka- Kohanim, or the priests and the Jewish people, purified themselves so that they would be ready and pure to sacrifice the Korban Pesach, or the, the Passover uh, Korban. That's interesting, because that's the term that Jesus used. You know, whatever gift you might otherwise have given, uh, you know, to your mother or father, honor your father or mother, it's Korban. And so Jesus actually used that same term. Um, yeah. hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. So Shabbat Parah, good catch there, Gina. Good catch. Um, so okay. that's this one Sabbath before the Sabbath before the New Year. So and th- and that Sabbath is called Shabbat Hakodesh. It's Parashat Shemini, which is the eighth. Oh, we know eight is also tied with Christ. It's tied with the the eight candles of the menorah. I mean, there's seven candles normally, but eight for Hanukkah. Opens with the consecration of the Mishkan Tabernacle. Two of Aaron's sons are consumed by a fire sent from God, and they attempt to offer a strange fire. Ooh, don't offer no strange fire. You know, it's like uh, when uh, they were trying to do a strange fire with Elijah there, and he called the real fire from God. God describes the animals, birds, and fish that are permissible and prohibited for consumption, as well as some of the laws of ritual purity. 
Interesting. Uh, and then we've got this Shabbat HaKodesh, which is the Sabbath before. Sabbath of the month precedes the first of the Hebrew month of Nisan, during which Passover is celebrated. On the first day of Nisan, God presented the first commandment of how to sanctify the new moon, Kedish HaKodesh, for the onset of Rosh Chodesh, and thus Nisan becomes the first month of the Jewish year, counting by months. Wow. This is getting exciting, guys. Woohoo! And it's also Yom Kippur because, uh, wow, Yom Kippur Katan. It's like what does Yom mean? Day, yom? the day. And the day of atonement, Kippur. Yes, okay. yes. So there's like a little. But they had nothing. They had nothing to atone all these last these for the past you know decades. What do they do? Oh, they have a lot to atone for, but only Jesus can atone for them at this point. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um. So what did they? But uh, in in their in their realm, I mean, the sin we always have to atone for sin. So in, in their ideas, they always have to keep con- atoning. Like not like us, where we're not once saved, always saved. But there's only one sacrifice for salvation, which is Christ. But but for them, they they feel they have to keep sacrificing. And uh, mm-hmm. so Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur Katan is a minor day of atonement. It's a practice observed by some Jews on the day preceding each Rosh Chodesh. The observance consists of fasting and supplication, but is much less rigorous than that of Yom Kippur proper. Hmm. Okay. So, wow. Okay. Man, it's coming up fast, guys. So this Shabbat is Sakhor, Sabbath of Remembrance. And then we go into the Sabbath of the Red Heifer is following that. Wow. So it's coming up fast. Woohoo! Coming up, Lord. Um, yeah. When is the, the remembrance? That's that's like their memorial day, right? Uh there what is day there is, is one. I, yeah. There is oh and that's Purim. That's right before Purim. Wow, Purim is a week away, guys. Woohoo! Yeah. Sweet Purim. Well, that's, yeah, that's why I'm showing extra next week. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. So this is describing the attack by Amalek is recounted. Uh, immediately preceding Purim, there's a tradition of the from the Talmud that Haman, the antagonist of the Purim story, was descended from Amalek, ooh, of the Amalekites. The, the portion that is read includes a commandment to remember the attack by Amalek, and therefore at this public reading, both men and women make a special effort to hear the reading. Wow. And then we've got Purim coming up right then. Okay. It's sundown Saturday the 23rd of March. That's when they're celebrating it. Sunday the 24th. Purim, from the word Lots, the word for Pur, also called Festival of Lots, is a Jewish holiday which commandments, command, commemorates the saving of the Jewish people from Haman in the ancient Persian Empire, a story recorded in the biblical book of Esther. Wow, guys. So we got a lot right here on the horizon. Ta'anit Esther. The fast of Esther is happening this Thursday, I think it is. It's a Jewish fast from dawn until dusk on Purim Eve, commemorating the three-day fast observed by the Jewish people in the story of Purim. If the date of the fast of Esther falls on Shabbat, the fast is instead observed on the preceding Thursday like other minor fasts. Ta'anit Esther begins at dawn and ends at nightfall. Wow. Exciting times. Are you ready for the Lord? Can you handle the truth? Um, going back to this image uh, that you wanted me to share. Let me see if I can get back there. Where am I now? I'm lost. I don't know where I am anymore. Uh, I'll just copy it again. Copy. Copy that. Uh, what's this? Yeah, okay. okay. So we've got this image here that's been making the rounds. And... Uh, it talks about, and I, maybe you guys can help me uh, understand some of this. Huh? I want to get your insights here. So it says, uh, the third watch begins. So they're, they're saying that when this new year begins, it's like a new era, right? Um, that could take place here on the 20, or on the, uh, you know, on Nissan 1. Were you going to say something about that, Tadra? What? Well, I just was like, I that's the part of that picture that I zoomed in on. Like, what's that circle where it's half light, half dark? Yeah. And there it is again. And there it is again. So, oh, yeah. Oh, right. Like the picture, like the half eclipse that you just showed. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So 
Yeah, the idea that we're starting the the third wah, and they say I don't understand all the terminology in this picture, but so I thought maybe you guys can uh, help me decipher. But third watch begins, twenty fifth house begins, the eighth day begins, Daniel's seventieth week begins. This is what it says: great sign in heaven, seven year delta, Rosh Hashanah, first ever total solar eclipse. So they're saying it's the first time on. On a Rosh Hashanah, because it's really Rosh Hashanah, it's the new year, it's a new Jewish year, is what's really beginning here. You know, they celebrated back in the seventh month, but really God said this will be your first month in the Bible to Moses. And so this is really the Rosh Hashanah. This is really the first month, first day of the, of the year. And so there's an eclipse happening on that day, which of course now I lost my image again. Uh, but there's an eclipse, oh there it is. There's an eclipse happening on that day. And they're saying first ever. I don't know if it's the first time ever in history. Um, but certainly is rare, I would say, for an, a total eclipse to happen on the first day of the year of the Jewish calendar. And we've also we have the presidential election happening this year as well. So, um, interesting thoughts. 25th house, does anyone know what that means? Third watch? Wait. I don't know what that means. The eighth day begins... Uh, I don't know. It's all kind of cryptic. I mean, I could interpret it in my own way, I suppose, but I'm kind of wondering what they meant by that. Eighth day. Um, now it is the eighth day, uh, which is the last day of our month, at least on our calendar of April. It's April 8th. So I'm not sure if that's what they're referring to, but, uh, and then we've got Daniel's 70th week. I understand what they mean by that. The idea of, so in other words, what they're saying Simple decipher is that the tribulation begins at this at, on that day. So it was what they're indicating, that that's the beginning of the tribulation, um, and uh, and so forth. So there you go. I don't know if, if anybody has any thoughts on that, but there it is. Well, I'm thinking of the black and white cookie when I saw that, and oh, I'm yeah. trying to see if what the significance is where the history of the black and white cookie came from. Do they yeah. sell black and white cookies? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do the black and white cookies. Yeah, that's like a, that. That's a thing. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Let me let me look yeah. it up here. Black and I white, black and white cookies. Let's see, black. Yeah, I've seen it before, and I always wondered about mm-hmm. them. Black, white, and white cookie. Uh, there it is, the black and white cookie. Oh, I've never seen that. Like an eclipse, half half black, half white. So what does it mean? What's the significance of a black and white cookie? Yeah. Wait, what's that part where it said Steinfeld black and white cookie? Uh, oh, I don't know. Black you cookie. know what's weird too that in advertising, I think it's just um, black and white cookie. Go ahead. In advertising, um, there it, it's always black and white couples, but there's black people only make like twelve percent of the population in the United States, but it mm-hmm. seems like it. When they advertise, it's only it's only like black and white people live here. Mm. For what? What, what are you no. referring to? No, in in most in most of the, if, if advertising went along with the population, it, it wouldn't. They only they represent the total amount of black people in the United States is twelve percent, but they're in almost every ad on TV and with white people. Like right. it's like that's all the, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, that's the whole that's diversity, right? That's what they're promoting is. Diversity, let's get all nations represented, which, you know, there's a Jesus, of course, told us to go make disciples of all nations. So certainly that's a there's a biblical precedent for that. But it's yeah, it's not based on population. But right. They try to make it seem like they're being excluded when when your point is that it's not really about exclusion. It's more about actual numbers. If you looked at actual numbers, it would be uh, it would be in that. That category. That's what they say about diversity, but they, they have taken black people off of every brand right now. They took Uncle Ben, Aunt Jemima, uh, any 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 product that had a black person on it has been removed, and now they call it something else. It's really strange. It's true, and yeah, it's, the irony is like they they do it in the name of supposedly uh, because it was offensive, but really when you look at the history, like Aunt Jemima was like celebrating Aunt Jemima, was celebrating Uncle Ben, but. It was, so it's like oh, yeah. it's like a backhanded way to actually remove them. When they they act like they're fighting for their justice, but they're actually not celebrating them. Right. So black and white cookie supposedly represents racial harmony, ebony and ivory, to bring 
fall McCartney back into the picture. Um, with Stevie Wonder. There's a little callback there for you. Um, but yeah. Ebony and Ivory, living in perfect harmony. So there you go. That's what the yeah. black and white cookie is all about. Amen. Let's let it, may we all live in perfect harmony. But that can only be found through Christ. That's why Jesus said there's, that's what the Bible says, there's no longer slave or free, Greek or Jew, male or female, because we're all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, amen, guys. Amen. This, this has been a, a really cool conversation. Um, and uh, I don't know if there's any other comments, closing comments anybody wants to make on any of those things. You didn't get to share. Now's your chance. I was still curious as what the Seinfeld reference was of the black and white cookie thing. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it was a Seinfeld reference or if it was just a, a picture of Seinfeld. Well, when, like in the some of the things, it was like you could click on that. But I don't know. I'll go back. Yeah, tomorrow. there was an episode of Seinfeld that had the black oh, and white Oh, it had the black cookie. and white cookie? Oh, yeah. Maybe that's what um, it is. Huh. My wife would know all about it. She's a Seinfeld fanatic. Um, but uh, I just thought I'd close with this scripture here. It says, There's neither Jew nor Greek, slave or free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Colossians 3 and Galatians 3. So amen, guys. This has been an awesome discussion tonight. Thanks so much for participating. I appreciate everybody here in the fellowship and on YouTube. If you are on YouTube and want to join us for our discussions, please uh, hit the first link in the description and, and come to MikhailMinistries.com. We would love to have you here and be part of this. It's free. So what are you waiting for? Jump in the fellowship and join the conversation. If you don't want to talk, you can always type as well. Uh, and we'd love to have you be part of our discussions. Tomorrow night we're having Bible question and answer time, so we hope that you will join us for that. Bible Q&A. Let me see if I can bring that up here for you again. Um, so Bible Q&A happens tomorrow night, so be sure to join us for that. You can come ask any question you have in the Bible, and we will do our best by the power of the Holy Spirit and through the Word of God to answer that question for you. Um, and then join us for prayer and communion on Tuesday. Uh, overcome sin on Wednesday, get trained as a disciple on Thursday, have fun in the Bible on Friday, uh, discuss the Bible on Saturday, watch a movie, a, a Christian movie on Saturday night, and then join us for Sunday service on Sunday. But guys, it's been awesome being with you. Uh, I'm wishing you all the best and all the blessed. And uh, come on over to the fellowship if you want to join the after video conversation. All right. Love you guys. Wishing you all the best, all the blessed. And Merry